Okay, I am live, excited, and full of energy, ready to participate with all of you. And uh, I know you're all getting used to coming on to, I would say, the tank on Tuesdays, right? Coaching Tank 02 is on Tuesdays. Uh, we have two group coachings this month, and we've already got, um, as we're planning for the year 2023, the lineup of training and the realignment of what we're going to be doing as the year you know comes along a lot of changes right a lot of changes will be coming upon us and so we need to be ready we need to be armed we need to be prepared as best as possible correct as best as possible so i'm i'm looking i see we've got marcia on and maybe a few others hi facebook and um, you're welcome to get on to the Zoom if you'd like to participate, because that's, that's how we group coach. We do it together where you are asking questions and it's not just me talking. Just me talking doesn't do any good unless we are communicating with each other. Good morning, Peggy. How are you today? It's great to have you. So today we're going to be talking about in, in the... Uh, metaphor of what coaching tank o2 is all about listen we need oxygen to be able to keep going in many different ways and i don't want us to lose oxygen over market fear misunderstanding of market and we're moving into um some commission realignment okay is anyone else out there feeling that or understanding that there is a commission realignment in the way that we're going to need to present ourselves and our value, you all should be going, what are you talking about? Or yes, I get it, right? Because if you are really in the know, then you know exactly what's going on. So um, I really want to talk about this today and bring this to light. And um, so let's see, here we go. I'm going to share my screen here. And, and let me tell you, when we group coach, <laughs> group coaching is about you guys coming on and we're talking. Uh, when I coach one-on-one, -on -one, obviously somebody is there, right? We're all, that, that person is with me and we're live and we're talking together. So it would be so much better if you guys could come on to the Zoom so we, I could see you. And I am looking at... Um, I am looking at Facebook a little bit over here. So I'm trying to pay attention and, and look at all the things that are going on. All right, guys. So Coaching Tank 02, it's 1103 and you're all getting to know that I start on time. Uh, number one, we've got a lot going on in our life, and our world. And so we want to be respectful of that. Now, Felix, unfortunately, will not be able to be with us today. And uh, so I've got this, of course, we're together. That's what being a collective group of, of coaches is. So you have both of us, right? All right. So you can see my screen. And I want to take us into not losing oxygen or having over this market fear. This market has created such uncertainty, but most of us have... It, it, whether you've been in the industry for a long time or not, you know that cycles come and go. It's the ebb and flow of this business, right? And so we need to move along with it, but our customers, the consumer itself, that group of people that are interested in selling and interested in buying, they are constantly bombarded, if you will, as we are in the marketplace with all this news, with what they call FUD. Now, in journalism, FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Okay, it's, it's FUD. There's so much fear mongering, if you will, in so many different ways to keep people from doing things. They paralyze people with all this journalism and information and so forth. So they cause uncertainty. Should I make a move? Should I pull the trigger or not? I, I don't know if I should. Should I buy? Should I sell? Should I invest? Should I wait? Should I do nothing? Should I get pre-qualified? Do I even call the realtor? Should I take it off the market? Right? So there's a lot of that. Good morning here. Good morning. So 
we we lose oxygen because a lot of that when these when these customers and people that we're talking to are like, well, would you buy real estate today? Would you? How many of you would actually buy a piece of property today if you could? See, and I think that if we don't have enough confidence over that and we don't know how to combat that with the right verbiage, then we're also kind of like feeding that fear. It's, it's, it's what's, what's in our demeanor, right? What about losing oxygen over commission realignment? Anybody out there want to tell me that they know yes or no what is happening right now with regard to what I'm saying? Group coaching shouldn't be me talking by myself, you guys. This is not a class. This is us coming together to make sure that we are empowered today to move forward as we're moving into 2023, as you're looking to get your, your business plan in order and your goals in place, right? So commission realignment. Anybody want to tell me? Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. No, I don't know what you're talking about. You got to tell me in the chat or you got to tell me in Facebook. Commission realignment. Okay, I have no idea what this is. Thank you, Carolyn. Right? Anyone else not understand what I'm talking about? Yes, ma'am. Nancy, commissions are changing for us. Now, somebody the other day um, gave me a phone call and was kind of panicking about commission. And I was like, why are you panicking? Uh, we have always been in a, I would say, commission war and battle in our heads. We believe that everybody always wants to take money from us or reduce our commissions. And yet there's really powerful listing agents that know how to get above and beyond what maybe would say the norm is. There's no fixed commission out there. Okay. How do you get more? How do you get more? How do you get more? What do you offer? What is your delivery of value? What is that, right? So right now, there is a commission realignment, Yasmin, that is happening on the national level. And on that national level, there is a lawsuit. And this lawsuit started out, there's actually several lawsuits, I believe three or four lawsuits that got started back in uh, 2019. It's not that far, right? It's not that long ago. But in 2019, they have gone forward to talk about antitrust and how the National Association of Realtors, along with these other large companies like Realogy and uh, Keller Williams and a few others, um, I think it's Berkshire Hathaway and Coal Banker. Anyway, they are part of this antitrust that's been violated. Now, there is a lawsuit that's going to be coming out February of this next year. Now, what I've learned and what I know about it is that it will be anywhere between a three-week or a six-week trial. And in this trial, what's going to come about, the testing of commission and the buyers having now to contribute to that commission versus it just coming from the seller. Okay, now does anybody know what I'm talking about? Or now you kind of are getting, what do you mean? Yeah. Um, and I don't want us to lose oxygen over this because number one, you have to completely understand what it means before you panic, okay? Because I want to help you combat this panic and this misunderstanding, even though this is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when, when this actually happens, right? And yeah, Atanas, thank you for being honest. This is the first time you hear about this. Quite honestly, it's the first time for a lot of people. And so I don't want us to lose oxygen over it. I want us to be aware. We need to have a heightened awareness about where we're going and how we're actually going to close more deals. We all have a business plan that we worked on, right? So how are we going to close more deals? And if this is going to be thrust upon me, like I didn't put this out there. I didn't create this. It's just going to come upon us. And guess what? It's not just California. It's national. So now it affects all of us. We're all one. We're all National Association of Realtors one. How will it affect us? How do we need to be prepared? 
How much more oxygen do I need? What do I need to be armed with, right? So this is what I want us to talk about today. And this is what I want us to be in discussion about, okay? So what are our objectives right now in the next maybe 45 minutes to an hour? Um, and again, it's all, about, it's all about you guys. Remember, I'm one of you. I, I am doing the same thing that you are doing, working towards my goals and ambitions with my group and my team so that we are successful. And here's a couple of the objectives and group discussion that I, I want us to look at, okay? And see, see, see where you are in all of this. So question, question, what is your new conversation to share about what's happening in your local market? In other words, what are you saying if someone asks you, how's the market? How's the market? If you, you guys can't stay quiet, it, it's called group coaching for a reason. And this is the place for us to be safe and to be safe, to be able to come together as a group and say, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm not really sure, or I want to learn. But if somebody asks you, so what's going on in the market? What do you think about the market? Would you buy a house today? Would you invest in the market today? Right? It's complicated. <laughs> I love that. That's a great answer. I mean, why not? Well, complicated. Great answer. The, the thing is, is that our conversation has to change, okay? Now, if you can see on the table behind me, I want you to understand something. There's always opportunities, right? Nancy, that's right, right? It's changing. I like that it's changing. I want you to write this down and remember this acronym or the, these letters, QBQ, QBQ. When someone asks you a question, there's a question behind the question, okay? The market is shifting and providing more opportunities for buyers, awesome. The point is, is that your answers are going to continue to change in how you, how you speak to someone, but you've got to think about QBQ, the question behind their question. So you know, tell me a little bit about what's going on in this crazy market. I mean, what do you think about this market? Well, question behind the question. What would you like to know about this marketplace? What's most important to you about learning about the market? Are you interested in selling? Are you interested in buying? Were you considering investing? Question behind the question. How can you give one overall amazing answer without trying to get behind the question. Does that make sense? Like, does that make sense? Because although I love what you're sharing with me and I think those are great answers, it is complicated. There's always opportunities. The market is shifting and it's providing more opportunities. Those are great comebacks, if you will, and good rhetoric. But we've got to change our conversation about how we, how we answer someone by doing question behind the question. Okay, and we're going to get into that a little bit more because I want to hear from you guys. The next question is, how are you shifting? How are you pivoting right now to adjust in this marketplace? What are your next steps? I want you to write down smart, modern marketing. It, it kind of goes the flip of MMS to SMM. What is your smart modern marketing look like? How have you pivoted to adjust in the way that you're going to get people to call you? Do you want to be on the phone all day making phone calls? Do you want to be on the phone cold calling and chasing business? Listen, I get that buying leads can work for some, and I get that we have different means where you know, we have phone numbers and, and all of that. Listen, we're in a different time. It's the 21st century. I don't have to chase business like I used to when I was younger. When I was younger, we knocked doors until we dropped. 
we made phone calls and dialed for dollars until we couldn't speak anymore, until our voices were just done. And we wouldn't be done until we got that lead and until we got that appointment. Anybody ever been there before, maybe still doing it? And sometimes that return on the investment of time can be very defeating. You just, you feel it. You feel like, oh gosh, I feel like I wasn't even productive today. Because now smart modern marketing has changed in the fact that I can see Kiyir's face and I can see Atanas's face. I want to see Nancy. I want to hear from Peggy. I want to hear from Carolyn. I, I want to know what it is that they offer me. Because the more information and value that you're providing to people, that becomes now your call to action. The way you're educating people and the information you give them is how you're going to get them off the fence to call you. How are you different? What are you offering? What are your next steps right now to be thinking? You should be writing down one thing, one thing for getting sellers to call you and one thing to get buyers to call you. What amazing offer can you give them to get them to say, I want to work with this person? Wow, Mr. Patel's really got it. Like, that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, I mean, look at what Atanas is saying to me. That's what I wanted to hear about the market. I wanted the truth. I wanted to be given something that was compelling to at least say, I'm going to give her a call or I'm going to text her. I'm going to send a direct message through Facebook. Facebook ads can work, but your message and your video of what you send is super important. Can you hear you want to share? Or are you just going to be on video? You want to talk? I'm, I'm asking you to unmute my friend. I was going to turn on the video, but I ended up uh, clicking on the mute button, unmute button. Okay. Did you want to share anything or you just want to be on no. video? Yeah, That's just better. to be on video. Awesome. I'm glad to have you on video. Welcome, welcome. And, and so what I'm, what I'm saying is, see how when he came on, come on, you guys, let, let's just keep it real. You and I love to watch videos. How many of you are watching videos every day? You know you are, you're on YouTube, you're watching other people, you know what? And it's okay, you should be watching your competition, people that you admire, people that you respect. Um, you, you know, there's, there's a saying called rip off and duplicate. People are always ripping off what other people have and duplicating and making it their own. I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with that because there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under sun and amazing that you're gonna do, but it's you. It's the way that you deliver it. If you speak another language, speak to your culture, speak to the folks that want to hear it in your language. Speaking another language is huge and powerful. And many of us are not doing that. Many of us are not reaching out to our people that way. So how are you shifting? Is that one thing you should be writing down right now? Because I'm going to tell you something. You are going to need to create videos and short snippets. These YouTube shorts, those are huge. They stay in the system, right? Small little reels and YouTube shorts of what? What does a seller want to know? Why is a seller going to call you? Why do you wait to give your listing presentation until you're at the table? Why don't you give snippets of your listing presentation and why anybody should list with you now? Why not? It's not a secret. Don't let it be a secret. Oh, somebody will know exactly what I'm doing. Come on. It, it, it's about you sharing that valuable information. Carolyn says, since the market is changing so much, what source of information should realtors be watching, reading, listening to in order to be up with the market, in order to provide our clients actual information? Love that. Carolyn, so in the chat, because you're not on Zoom with us, tell me where you're from if you're not from California. And don't you think that's a fair question? Where, where? We should be reading a lot. If you aren't empowered, I'll just share with you yesterday. How are we shifting and pivoting to adjust in the marketplace? It is the information that we're empowering ourselves with. So then I can share it back with somebody. Yesterday, Maui, okay. Yesterday, um, I sat down and reviewed 34 forms, legal forms, 34. And out of those 34, 20, uh, 10 of them are brand new forms for my state. 
when I was done, exhausted mentally, my eyes were hurting. They were so dry from looking at it. I had to make it super big. Um, I was empowered. I was empowered by the education I just gave myself. I gave myself new conversation. I would sit there and I actually was with two other people and we were looking at it together and it was a broker and also my husband who's a commercial realtor. And I said, what would you say to this question? And how would you respond to that when you're explaining the contract? And what would we say to a seller about this? We need to be empowering ourselves, Carolyn, right? With the source of information with our contracts, um, I also want you to go to vendoralley.com, V-E-N-O-R-A-L-L-E-Y.com. Now, vendoralley.com is going to keep you in the know of everything that's going on nationally. The fact that HomeSnap got bought up by um, CoStar, it's going to keep you abreast of the FHFA new loan limits in different states. It's going to keep you abreast of all kinds of things that are happening in different states. So Vendor Alley is kind of like um, a legitimate, Carolyn, place for the gossip, but in the right way, if you will. Okay. And it kind of give, keeps you in the know of like, what, what's going on with these lawsuits? And Greg Robertson is somebody that you were gonna learn more about. He's very well rounded and trusted in the industry along with Brad Edman, who they bring out a lot of stuff there with, with Inman, okay? What do we need to be reading? Should we be reading Wall Street Journal and what's going on? Should we be reading what's going along in, in our state? I had brought up, um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me bring it up. I don't know if I can do it that way. Perfect. So in your state, Carolyn, can you guys all see that? It, we are always learning about the different things that are coming up in our market. It's your job in how you're shifting and pivoting to adjust in this marketplace is the information that you're taking in so you can deliver it. Your little video shorts need to be powerful to tell a seller how to get off the fence and decide to make a decision to sell so they can move forward. Your buyer presentation is going to change as I move into the next objection or objective of today and how you're going to tell people um, that, that you're going to be requesting buyers to pay your commission, perhaps. Yeah, we're going to be requesting our commission in a different way. Do I suggest keeping current matters? Yes, Atanas. Yes, absolutely. Um, that information, the slides and so forth. Remember that we can use these infographics, if you will. We can take the information from our, our states and, you know, do copy and paste and then say where you got the information from and then speak to it. Because how many of you follow people that you really do appreciate, like you honestly appreciate and you learn from them and you're, you're sitting there going, I'm learning from another realtor. I'm learning from a lender. I want to be doing this. You all should be raising your hand going, yeah, you're right. I do. I do watch people. So how you pivot and adjust, your next steps are making your marketing plan of your video shorts on how you're going to get sellers off the fence, what your call to action is going to be. What is it? What's my call to action to get sellers to say, I'm going to call Kier, I'm calling Atanas, I'm calling Jessica. I, I want to know more about their listing presentation. Do not hold back. If you go on a listing presentation today, what is your presentation? Give somebody a YouTube short snippet on that. It's not about the CMA, you guys. It's not about the pricing when you're doing that, okay? Now, what I was sharing with you was everything that's behind me on this table here. I've got nothing but scripts. Our conversation is going to change. We need to be practicing scripts. We need to be armed and ready with how we're going to educate people. The buyers are gonna to need to be educated differently and we have to be the ones to tell them shortly because you think they wanna read all this? No, they don't. 
give it to me in layman's terms, L-A-Y-M-A-N-S, apostrophe S, layman's terms, what the heck are you talking about in this marketplace? What the heck? What the heck? It's too much. If you can empower me enough in 30 to 45 seconds, and then maybe lead me to your Facebook page, maybe lead me to your website where you have longer videos of explanation, lead me and empower me enough to go, I'm pulling the trigger. I want more. I want more of, of what you've got to offer. So take information about mortgage drops after the Fed hints on smaller rate hikes in December. Take this rhetoric that's here in this verbiage, make it your own, create your own script. These scripts, they've been the main years. I've written my own scripts. I've gone through neurolinguistic programming. I can help you with all of that. It's wonderful and you need to be practicing, but you could take something like this, make your own script, speak to it, and move on. Then you could take consumer confidence. You can take holiday spending. You could take home building. You could take anything. They're reading it. It's not, not available to them if they Google it. So if, if, if the information sounds negative, how do you turn it into a positive? a lot of people that few people that I'm coaching right now they just took three listings I got another person that's got seven going on eight brand new listings yes in California people are not all leaving California there are people that are coming to California with opportunities that they that that are changing in their life okay so how are they doing it a lot of positivity on how you're shifting and pivoting is in the positivity of information that you're sharing. You guys, is this resonating with you at all? Like at all? Or are you just like, I don't know what you're talking about, MJ. Whatever, whatever. Um, yep, there's a lot of information out there. It is hard to decipher. Just think about it. Carolyn's saying a lot of information. It's hard to decipher it. So if they're struggling, how the heck can they keep up? Your job is to keep them up with the things that they need to know. What does a seller need to know right now in your territory to make a move, to say, I'm gonna list? Cause you're telling me where I can go and you're giving me options, okay? What do they need to know? I have not yet many, one, anyone who's bought a property one, two, three, 10 years ago, or even 2008 who has said, I wish I have waited to purchase. Awesome. You know what? And that's very true because right now, I've had people say to me, I, I need to buy a house. I know that maybe it's not the rate I could have gotten in February or March, but it doesn't change the fact that I need to buy it. And I know what it's going to do for me in the future, right, Carolyn? I know what it's going to do for me in the future. It's what my family needs. And I want to stop throwing my money away. Renting should only be temporary. Renting should only be temporary. Even people that are selling their houses now that, that say, I'm going to rent for a while because this is my plan. Help them through their plan. What about a video towards that? If you are considering selling your home and you have also considered renting for a short while, let's talk about this. Hi, I'm Kier Patel and I am your local realtor in X area. Let me share with you what a good transition would be if you're considering that. Here are two options. Are you following what I'm telling you? You, you, you guys, you, you, you learning to know me and some of you don't know me, I'm super passionate about what I do, okay? And what I tell you that I'm doing and telling, with, telling you guys and we're working on this together, it, I'm speaking to myself because this is how I'm working as well, okay? So shifting and pivoting to adjust in this marketplace is gonna take these next steps your rhetoric, your scripting changes. We cannot speak the way we were speaking even in February of 2022. These scripts, I got so many here, it's insane. Some of them will still work to a degree. So I'm not gonna say that they were not gonna work. What I'm saying is now how we lead people in to making decisions needs to be different. And your call to action, your next steps should be today, five calls to action for each consumer. How am I going to get a seller to say, yes, I'm going to contact you? Five. What are those call to actions? 
What about five for a buyer? Do you have them? Do you know what they are? How are you going to add them to your Facebook ads? How are you going to add them to your text messages? Are you shifting and pivoting in the marketplace with a text campaign that works? Have you even started a text campaign? So I've got like all these text campaign and drip campaigns that you can do through texting, right? And I know that Felix talked about that, right? He talked about how you can send through slide dial, you can do a recorded messages, you can send text messages to over 100 people if you want, right? But you've got to start creating your scripts and your messages. It's your job, it's your business. What do you want to say to people? If a seller called you right now or a buyer called you right now, what are you telling them? What is your answer to the following question I get a lot? I know the market is hot and I can get a lot of money for my house if I decide to list it, but where would I go? Where, where would I go? Well, where do you want to go? Where would, you, where would you like to move? If you could move today, where would you move? You guys, help Carolyn answer that question too. You, you're telling me that nobody else would get that question? Are you afraid to even answer the question because we don't know? I think the question, one way to answer the question, Carolyn, too, is the QBQ. The question behind the question is, where would you like to go? What's, what's causing you to want to move there? What is that new reason? Um, everybody has access to properties today, right? You can get on Zillow, you can get on realtor.com, you can get on Redfin, they all have access. So are you the gatekeeper anymore of properties? You're not. You used to be, but we're not anymore. I'm not the gatekeeper. However, in your next steps, how are you helping someone, Carolyn, and all of you that are watching and are here, if someone were to say to me, I really would like to move to, uh, let's say, the Big Island, Carolyn. I've never thought about going to the Big Island, or I've always thought about moving back to the Big Island because she's from Maui. I want to get to the Big Island. And let's say you live on Maui. So you can't get them to the big island. I don't know how it works out there for you on referrals. You'd be referring them, right? Um, but wherever they want to go, how are you going to help them get there? Just sending them lists of properties? Send me a list. Can you send me lists? List isn't the way to do it. It's about, let me, let me show you how I'm going to go out to begin to market, to find the properties and the people that are also looking to move. What's your plan of attack and action? I know um, Jessica might have something that she can share that I've taught in the past by using one form in, in California. We use a form called the single party compensation form. Anybody else have a form like that in their state? Single party compensation form and how you're gonna go out and help somebody with one transaction and save them money. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Let, let me read Carol. Usually they want to get the most out of the sale for their home, but they want to stay in Maui and buy for less. And that's not, that is not really possible. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, a lot of people are downsizing or trying to take the, all the equity out of their house. I got a lot of equity in my house. If I were to move, I don't necessarily think I'm going to be able to get what I want for less. I'm going to end up being paying the more, more of that money, right? More than what I'm paying now because I pay peanuts for my house. I've been here for so long. So I agree. You can't always do that. So you guys don't, don't make it so that I'm giving the answers all the time. This is group coaching. If you stay silent, you don't win by keeping anything to yourself. Vulnerability is part of growth. Vulnerability is part of growth saying, I don't know. Carolyn is saying, I don't know. What do you guys think? Most people want to get most of their money out of their house. Agree a hundred percent, right? But if they want to stay where they're at, where they're at and it's not possible, how do you answer that? Okay. So Jessica, uh, she said, I just used that form this week. I, I had a cash buyer that only wanted to be in one specific community. So I sent out the letter, which I have a letter. Yes. Uh, to specific homeowners in the community stating that I had a cash buyer. Excellent. Excellent. And I hope you get some really good feedback on that because 
if you can say, I have one way, I have a real buyer, um, that's going to help move somebody who's saying, okay, good. You have somebody. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to give you a call. Calls to action. Do you have buyers that want to move in a specific area? So anybody want to help Carolyn answer her question? You're telling me that if, if you had to answer this question, how would you answer it? This is the new conversation that we need to be having. I want to get the most out of the sale of my house, Atonis, Nancy, Peggy. I want to stay in Maui. I want to stay in, in uh, New York. I want to stay in Manhattan. I want to stay in Chicago. And I want to buy for less. But that is not really possible, is it? So is it possible if they move to a different area? Is it possible if they put more money down? Because Carolyn, maybe more money down will help them. Let, let me take you into something else. You guys are way too quiet, way too quiet. How many of you, yeah, you should be laughing, laugh with me. How many of you are very empowered right now with what's going on in, in finance? This is my cheat sheet, okay? I'm not a lender, but guess what? I need to be empowering myself with what's going on enough to not get myself in trouble because I gotta move people to make a decision. More money down or looking on the outskirts. Great answer. Carolyn, that's what Atanas is saying, right? And I had mentioned that. Maybe we put more money down and we look a little bit in a different area that still keeps you in Maui or keeps you outside of your area, but you get to stay there. Maybe you didn't want to put as much money down. Oh, great. You're answering as well, Atanas. What about a rehabbed home? Maybe, you know, something like that. I love that. The point is, is that we've got to have new conversation. How are we moving people forward with the right rhetoric? Okay. Shifting and pivoting to adjust in this marketplace is going to have to take these next steps. And all of these scripts, right? I need to be educating people and informing people in a great way. Title. Do you know enough about title? Do you know enough about guiding people and maybe how they want to start LLCs, LLPs to invest, buying with other people? Investing, by the way, right now, multifamily is big. Multifamily is not actually hurting, at least in our state, as much as people think. It's really not. Um, question here, Nancy's saying on Facebook, how about helping them see other possibilities and opportunities? Asking questions to help them open up the way they're approaching this market and their situation. Yes, ma'am. That, that's it. Question behind the question. So have you considered a different kind of opportunity? Could it be multifamily, live in one and rent out the other? Could it be the rehabbed home? Could it be buying with someone else, LLC, LLP? What are those options? You guys, our job is to be more consultative. Your next steps in shifting and pivoting in this market should be how consultative are you? In what way are you consulting people through your video shorts? Um, my personal opinion, and yes, it's personal, okay? This is just my, my thought. I'm a little bit tired of just people showing that they're previewing property. Okay, so you're pre, look at this house. Look at what you can, okay, can you, can you offer me something more? that I can bite on and that I can chew on that will get me to say, I'm calling you. Nancy, I'm calling you. You, you, you made me jump out of my seat with, wow, I didn't know that I could do that. Maybe that's something I need to consider. I never thought about buying a multifamily home. I never thought about becoming an investor. Maybe I'm taking money out of my home to invest wait a little while while the market settles in a different way, Carolyn, right? And see how my money grows in this next year. Make sense? I mean, we have to offer different possibilities and opportunities, but the way we pivot and shift has to be consultative, okay? It has to be. Information is key, valuable, and educating people today 
is big. I need to be educating the buyer and the seller in a way that my competition is not. Your competition might be sending out direct mail. All good. In the direct mail, just listen, just sold. That's great. But what about information and in ways that will get them to get off the fence? Okay. So since you guys are not going to talk to me, I feel sad and lonely talking to myself. Um, I have a multifamily on the market and I'm having a hard time selling it because of the self-sufficiency test. Oh, most people in my area have FHA loans and my seller also needs to bring down the price. Mm. Anybody want to speak to that? Multifamily. Yeah, the seller needs to bring down the price. And you know what? You're giving them the, the, the options of what that's going to do for them, right? Where are they moving forward to? What are they going to do with that money? Atanas, are they going to buy another? Are they doing a 1031 exchange? Are they moving that money somewhere else? Are they going out of state? You want to you wanna explain to everybody how you mean self-sufficiency test? Since you're talking about it. Oh, he's retired. Okay, he's retired. So is he going to pay the boot and just pay his taxes and move on? Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because the self-sufficiency test is the market rent. What's going on? How, how are we empowering people to consider maybe renting out their home for a while and doing something else if they need to move on? Can they do it? How do you transition somebody into that? Do you know how to do that? If not, that's the new conversation. Possibilities and opportunities. Nancy mentioned it, right? But you've got to pivot. And in the way that you're helping people understand what the next, the next move is for them. If you don't even know your next move in your own business, how are we helping them? We've got to be educating. So let, let me move on to, to something else um, and, and share my screen here again, just to kind of get back to where we were. Oh, good. How are you going to present your value differently to validate your commission? You guys, with these changes that are coming upon us, they're going to come upon everybody nationally. I don't know what the law is going to be. I don't know exactly how it's going to be changed and presented to where we are going to be seeing a new listing agreement in the state of California and all across the board? How is it going to change? Is it only going to be one-sided to where we have to now ask for our commission differently? You guys, we're going to have to ask for our, different, our, our commission differently. So what does your buyer's presentation look like? Do you have one? Is your, are your YouTube shorts going to be also small buyer presentations and how you offer? Are you just a door opener? Anybody can open a door. Anybody can drive you to open up the door and show you this really pretty house. How do you negotiate for them? Are you a great negotiator? How do you negotiate? And how well equipped and informed are you to explain all your contracts and protect your buyer and your seller. There's always a way to protect them and keep, keep them in a place where they can either get out of a situation. Um, anybody play chess? Anybody play chess? So I just started learning how to play chess. Oh my gosh, crazy game. And I absolutely love it because I'm super competitive, but I also like to be challenged. Look. I want you guys to not be challenged in the market as we move forward. I want you to be placing your pieces in such a way, if you're a chess player or go learn how to play chess, you've got to be three to four steps ahead of your opponent. How are you going to move here to how are you going to move here so that you can check your king and get a deal, get somebody to call you, get somebody to DM you and send you a message through your Facebook ad, through your slide dial. So the way you educate your buyer 
is going to be super important. Okay. How are you going to do it? What does your buyer presentation look like and how are you going to change it? Okay. Now I'm going to share something with you and listen, there are a lot of things out there available. Um, and let me get it up. This is a buyer presentation and I've worked for many companies and they have provided different things. So, you know, at the end of the day, we shouldn't be rip off and rip off and duplicating to this degree. Um, number one, we respectful to copyright and so forth. Uh, but when you look at what I show you, there isn't any reason why you shouldn't be creating your own and why you shouldn't have it. Okay, so I'm going to share it with you. And my point in sharing it is to ask you, do you have one? And in what way are you going to now provide such compelling reason to work with you as a buyer's agent? Because now there's going to be these new forms, especially in California. So again, this is all going to be thrust upon us the way it changes. However, this lawsuit comes down in February, and it could be as soon as April one, no fooling around that we're going to learn. We're going to have to ask for our commission differently. It's already in our forms in California. We have to ask for commission differently, presenting why a buyer should pay us in the event a seller doesn't want to or in the event that a seller is only paying a flat fee. What happens if the buyer, if the seller starts saying, hey, here's what I'm gonna pay. It's a $5,000 flat amount. When we're normally making 12,500, 18,000, 20,000, for those of us in the luxury market. So we're going to a buyer with what? A buyer broker agreement, a buyer representation compensation agreement that all the work that I do for you has value. I'm not just a door opener. Well, how are you going to present that? How are you going to present it? Do you have a digital presentation now? Can you use one slide, create that slide, put it in a background, do a um, Instagram video, do a YouTube short, send it out there and start telling them how. We have to present ourselves differently as a buyer's agent, not just as a door opener. Because they, they think, well, I don't really cut you any checks. So I guess, you know, you just open the door and then the seller just pays. What does your buyer presentation look like? How are you empowering them and sharing with them what they need to be doing? What is your role as a buyer specialist? What is your role? Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There you go. Much better, right? What is your role? Can you speak to this in a video? Of course you can. And you should be pivoting right now and doing a YouTube short on your role as a buyer specialist and why people should be using you. Why should they consider using you? Asking for the business. How are you asking for the business? Your call to action. How do you search for homes? I don't just send you a list. I'm going to go out there and market for you. If you need me to find a needle in the haystack, I have a way to do that. I have a way to help you with new home construction. I'm very well versed with new home construction. I know what's going on in this town, this city, this territory, this marketplace, whether you're looking to buy a condo flat in this Trump Towers, if you will, or if you're looking to buy over here in this zip code, I know what's going on. So how well versed are you? Then you do small video shorts on that and you get people to give you that. What about pocket listings? Pocket listings are gonna become something that I think we're gonna see more of. We're probably gonna be seeing a lot more dual agency as well. There are eight states that don't allow dual agency, but in my state, they continue to allow it. How do you search? And in what way will you be providing them information? What's your mobile apps? 
How are you going to be providing that to them at their fingertips? How do you guide them to buying their home? How? What's your process? Do you have a process? Great. Tell me in a video short. Give me 30 seconds, 45 seconds why you're going to be amazing to work with. Why following you in the car is going to be great. And when we get out of the vehicle and we go into the property, I can't, the process is, it's, it's scary a little bit to buy a house. There's so many forms and things that they have to think about, financing and so forth. Financing, you guys, understanding the process with your lender is huge. Doing small video shorts right now with your lender. Why not? Who else is doing it? When you first take an application, here's what's going on. I'm with you every step of the way. I got you. I've got you. And then we're going to do this next. Talk to you about your down payment. I'm going to talk to you about what you need. We're going to take you through it every step of the way. What happens in your home inspection? What you need to know and how I'm going to support you when we're looking at repairs that are needed if you're going to buy a rehab home. Appraisals. How is that changing now, Carolyn, right? Appraisal, how's that going to change? What do you need to know about new construction? It's different, but I've got you. Don't show up to a new build without me. Why? I mean, I'm really not going to be using you. I really don't. Your representation and what I'm going to help you as I go through the process with you is important. How? What do you need to know about buying a new home? That sales agent may not be providing them this kind of information. They represent the builder. They take you through the process to get you through all their paperwork, but maybe they're not aligning them with the things that they need to know. Helping them understand language and lingo. It's our job. Additional terms and definitions. Can you speak to it? Can you talk about interest rates in a really powerful way? Can you talk about buy downs and discount points? Can you talk about property taxes? Can you talk about Miller Roos, right? Can you talk about what it means when they gain equity, the different disclosures and what they need to know? What type of loan is best for them right now? Those are the options. For some of you, um, what I'm talking to people about a little bit more now, I know Nancy would, would maybe attest to this, and we're going to be learning more about it, is bridge loans. Bridge loans? What the heck is a bridge loan? How do I speak to a bridge loan? A bridge loan will carry a seller, right, Peggy? Peggy, do you know about bridge loans? Um, Carolyn, you know about bridge loans? Nancy, I know you know a little bit about it. Atanas. Bridge loans are going to help sellers move to where they want to go quicker if they can't sell their home. Bridge loans went away for a while, right, Peggy? And then they, they're, they're now coming back. So we need to be able to talk to that. We need to be able to, to talk to people about considering adjustables, considering 80 10 10s, right? Um, all the different changes in our loan limits and how that's going to help people make decisions. What are their frequently asked questions? So if I have a great frequently asked question, I just do that in a video short and say, call me if you want to know more. This is how I'm empowering people and their next purchase. This is the way I'm helping sellers make their next move. I would not know how to correctly explain a bridge loan. Thank you for being honest. So now you have an opportunity to go find your lender that hopefully they have a great bridge loan opportunity. Some of the banks are offering portfolio products, if you will. So um, let me take a look in the chat and see what, what message. When I first started, they told me not to speak much about loans or mortgages because it's not my specialty. They told me to connect them with the loan officer. Okay, fair. I'm not a lender, Thomas but I need to know enough to be able to help people move forward and say, have you learned about, there is a program here. There is an option for you. If we don't know that, I can't get people to take a next step. I'm, I'm, I'm not the doctor that actually prescribes the, the proper loan for them, but I am the nurse and the nurse is kind of checking in and, and saying, you know, you, you might want to ask the doctor about this. You might want to ask him about this. 
I kept myself away from learning about it. Yeah, no, don't. I don't want you to become a lender, but I want you to be armed enough with information about different loan programs that are out there. Oh, I don't think I have the one that I wanted. Um, different loan programs that are out there. That's not the one I wanted. I think it's, it's down here. Uh, no, that's not it. It, it, it's about how you're going to empower people and then you connect them with who they need to be working with. So did you know about bridge loans? Hey, I'm sitting here with, you know, Bob Smith, Bob Jones, and um, he is the lender at such and such. Let me explain to you a little bit more about why I'm here today, because many of my sellers, right, Carolyn, um, not really sure where they're going to go to next. They, they know where they want to go. They're concerned about how long our market has shifted into a place where they're not selling in two days. They're taking right now on average in such and such zip code, it's taking about 42 days to sell maybe 60, depending on the condition of your property, right? Maybe the location and so forth. There is an option out there for those of you who don't know, and it's called a bridge loan. And I have Bob here to explain um, two or three points about it. A minute. Can he do that in a minute? You could say a lot in a minute. You want to know more? Give me a call. I can move you to your next destination and, and share with you more about what's going on in your marketplace and in your zip code to get you to your next destination today. Bridge loads are your opportunity and possibly it's right for you. Boom, you're done. It's about knowing, right? The more we know, the more value we add to our clients. Yes, absolutely. I don't need to be the lender. I need to know enough to move them to the next um, to their next destination to help them make a decision, if you will. How long will a house last? This is talking about market conditions and pricing. So we're helping our buyers as well with what's going on in the market so they can make a decision. Many people are not that, yes, the rate is the rate is the rate. The rates are gonna go up, the rates are gonna come down. You're the expert in helping them know that buying houses for the long, run, isn't it? I'm not looking to change right now. Or are you looking to just like sell right away? And then you're looking there for a home, for an investment. How long are you going to stay there? Five years, seven years, 10 years. Most people are staying in their homes longer, but they want to stop renting. Marsha, okay. You've motivated me today, realizing I need to sharpen my knowledge in every way. Awesome. And new commission structure is something to really keep up to date on. Yes, ma'am. When it comes. So how we present how we're going to be asking for our commission is a big deal because that's, that's changing you guys. It's the delivery on how we ask. Our commission isn't being taken away. How we ask for it is, is going to be what's different, okay? We talk about fair market value in our presentation. How do you negotiate? One of my favorite slides here, negotiating on a home. How are you going to help them negotiate? How? What is your process? How do you help them think? Can you do that in a 30, 45 minute snippet and then have a call to action to get them to say, if you want to learn more on how I negotiate and win offers in this new changed marketplace of area code such and such or territory such and such, let me explain to you how I'm, I'm looking at the market today and negotiating for you. Show them a slide, give them something to, to think about, okay? How much should I offer? What a great, I'm giving you right now different steps that you can take so that you can create it in ways that you can offer right now through whatever means you're gonna do, whether it's gonna be through a postcard, a mail out, you're going to door drop on, on, on um, a door hanger. I'm saying video, video shorts, video, video. So you know what? Hi, I am Marsha Kalama and I am with ABC Realty. Today, I'm going to be talking to you. Um, buyers right now, they, they're questioning, how much should I offer? The market has changed in territory such and such. And I really want to go over two options with you and how I work to help you understand uh, pricing and the days on market 
how we look at comparing those properties to the property in question that you're looking to do. You know, you want to offer as close to asking price. Some of you are wanting to find deals, right? I know that. I'm, you know, want to invest myself and I'm looking for deals. So let's talk a little bit about that. Do you see where I'm going? And, and then give them the option and then let them know. So if you would like to know a little bit more, call me today. If there's a property you're interested in or you want to know more about the different ways that I, I will be supporting you and negotiating, I look forward to a call. You've got to help people understand why working with you is great. Why working with you would actually be a wonderful decision. Why working with you is their answer. You're going to be the, 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 the solution that they've been looking for to the problem that I have. I don't know who to pick. Everybody says they're amazing and they're great. But you empowered me today with just a slide that you did. Do your presentation on these small slides. Don't hide your listing presentation or your buyer presentation anymore and don't keep it a secret. Don't keep it a secret. Awesome, Matanis. I want you to go learn more. So no more keeping your listing presentation a secret. Go tell me why I should list with you. Do it today. Tell me today why I should list with you. Tell me today why I should work with you as a buyer's agent. Because now if our forms are going to be telling us that we need to ask them, now you're interviewing as a buyer's agent, aren't you? Have you ever really considered the fact that you are and have always and should have been, if you haven't, interviewing as a buyer's agent? Hire me because. You should be hiring me as your buyer's agent because of this reason. Because I'm an amazing negotiator, because I'm gonna protect you, because I'm gonna empower me, power you, because I'm gonna show you the different things that you can use, okay? Hold on. And then you put in who you are, okay? So in, in the um, famous terms of Tom Ferry, we rip off and duplicate. I'm using that as an example to show you that you need to create your own. You need to come up with your digital slides, your digital presentation. You need to now be able to empower people with how and why they should be working with you. As I don't really understand why I should be working with you or why I should be hiring you. Well, then show me why. Help me understand that, right? Help me understand it. Um, let me see. Group coaching is never going to work when we stay quiet. I don't know how you guys think that group coaching will work when we don't talk to each other. <laughs> You're going to have to talk to me. Even if it's, even if it's just quietly, let me see if I can't get this back up. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Nope, you can't get that back up. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have anything that they want to share that empowered you today to say, yes, I can do this. Yes, I'm going to do something different because I want you to understand right now, requesting somebody to give you 20 or $30,000 of their equity to market their property and negotiate for them as a seller's agent is one thing that we have learned in this industry. Now I need you to understand that you're going to need to do the same thing for a buyer. You understand that? You're gonna to need to do that now for a buyer. If you haven't done it before, you should have always been doing it. You should have always been doing it. Your confidence right now is anchored on the development of what? So I want you to say that to yourself, okay? I want you to say that to yourself. My confidence is anchored on the development of my new so skills. Oops, I need to turn okay. that down. My confidence is anchored on the development of my new skills, my new scripts, and new dialogue in a shifting market. And I can close more deals because I've realigned myself to win. You need to realign yourself right now. You have to do it. There, the, it's not staying the way it was anymore, you guys. So just realign yourself. 
Now, next week when we meet, um, I trust that Felix will be here with us uh, as well. And he was unable to be here today. But just doing previewing homes and videos, right? It makes more sense than just doing videos and previewing homes. I'm so glad you said that, Peggy. Because that, that's not getting anybody outside of their realm of thinking about working with you. The only way I'm going to get anybody to consider working with me is to educate them and provide value. And I don't need to be long-winded. I need to create some snippets. So today, your next steps would be, what are the five things that I could be providing to a seller? I'm going to name my video this, 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 and this. That's my video name. And then I'm going to speak to that. I'm going to have to create my script. And then I'm going to do one for a buyer. I'm going to talk about negotiating for them. How do I make offers today? Maybe on one of the sellers one, what's my next move? How do I decide where I'm going next? Right? You be the judge. Do not make this complicated. If you overcomplicate it, that's paralysis analysis and you won't do anything. If you really are the expert in your marketplace and you really trust that you can provide value and list somebody's home today with such confidence that you're going to get them the, the price that they should be getting, then it should be easy for you to come up with five reasons why they should work for you. If you know, not, number one right now, that you're not just a door opener, I know Jessica on a personal basis. I've coached her. We've worked together for several years now. I know her value and I know her worth. I know that she knows it as well. Now you just need to speak to it in a way that's compelling enough to get somebody to say, I'm going to call you. So why? Why should anybody call you today? Your new skills, Atonis, are learning and understanding maybe two or three options to get people off the fence with financing. Are your new skills empowering yourself in the way you negotiate? How you explain the, the contracts to someone in a way that they feel protected? And your new dialogue should be on someone who wants to understand the marketplace, why they should consider buying, why they should consider selling. Maybe they're going to stay there. Maybe they're going to rent. What's their transition, right? So my confidence is anchored on the development of my new skills, new scripts, and new dialogue in a shifting market. And I can close more deals because I've realigned myself to win. This is where we need to be right now, group. This is where you need to breathe, breathe deep and understand that you can do this, but you're going to need to shift and pivot your mindset and these areas. This is why Coaching Tanko 2 is here. There's lots of things that we could be learning out there. We can get too empowered with too much learning, but no action. So that's not, that's not going to help. No action, forget it. So plan your next steps right now. Five snippet videos on why I should list with you. Do your listing presentation. Take snippets of it. Five reasons on why working with me is the best choice you could make as a buyer's agent. Hire me as a buyer's agent for this reason. Do your short snippets. If you're not a video person, get over it. And if you want to do three videos, I'll be nice to you and do three videos and do two infographics. Infographics, a statement and a call to action. Create them now, put them on your calendar, put them in your meta business suite, set them up so that they're already set to go. Click the button, use Canva, you're done. I'm all the way done until March. We, right now it's quiet time. For a lot of us, if we don't have a lot of listings, if we don't have a lot of buyers we're working with, and even if you had three or four or, four or five, you have time. That should be part of your scheduling. That should be part of your marketing time, okay? All right, anybody want to share, comment, say anything, thumbs up, smile at me, tell me that you were here, tell people why they needed to be here, they should have been here. And just remember, as we continue to group coach, coming on to Zoom is much better. When you can be on and talking with me, so much better, right? Because we, we learn from each other. And I really value when you guys are sharing these things with me because I learn as well. I learn as well. You're all in different marketplaces. Uh, you're welcome, Atanas. You're all in different places 
that can share what's shifting in your marketplace, right? You're welcome, Jessica. So if there's something shifting in your market, uh, yes, I'll repeat infographics. If there's something in your marketplace right now that you could share today that would get somebody to consider working with you as a buyer's agent and a listing agent, you should be writing that down. Why would anybody work with you to date? Something's changing in my marketplace and this zip code. An infographic would be anything that you can create in Canva with a statement of something having to do with the market. Uh, the other thing would be, I'll bring it up on my screen and then we'll close up unless you guys have anything else you wanna share. Um, an infographic. Um, here we go. Can you see that now? I, I think it'll pop up right now. It didn't. It says that I'm sharing my screen. Nope. Share it real quick. There it is. Okay. So this infographic is the December 22, 2022 California latest market data. That would be an infographic but you can create your own infographics through Canva. Canva is your best friend. Yeah, Canva is your best friend. My point is, give me a statement and something that just gets me so excited about saying, I wanna to talk to Peggy. Peggy understands what's going on in this zip code. Nancy understands what's going on in multifam. I wanna to talk to her, I wanna list with her, or at least I, I, I just wanna to talk to her, period. I wanna know more of what you've got that's that's how we're compelling people video so that would be an infographic and or nancy something that you can create on canva which would be a statement or anything having to do about the marketplace and so forth does that make sense i want to see your videos i want to see what you're sharing do not wait don't wait you can tag me tag me tag me at ace it with mj tag me at mj underscore fortress tag me I want to see what you're doing. Do not wait. Videos of houses. Eh, everyone's doing that. No one's educating me. I look and I seek and I'm, I'm trying to find who's going to educate me. The ones that are educating, they're getting responses. They're getting feedback in their Instagram feed. You want feedback on your Instagram? You want feedback on your Facebook? Educate me. Empower me. And tell me why I should be working with you. Okay. All right, guys, we're done for today. Any comments? Anything else you want to share? We will be back here next week, Tuesdays with the tank, tank Tuesdays, coaching tanko two Tuesdays, um, 11 o'clock. I trust that Felix will be with us as well. And um, you go have a major, wonderful, productive, awesome day, believing in yourself, anchoring yourself in new skills, new dialogue, new conversation, and put yourself out there in a way that will really stand out, okay? That's my message for all of you today. All right, guys. Bye for now. Have a good one. Happy holidays.